Hi, I'm Nikki and welcome to The Guest List. As you can see, we're in our new studio. We're thrilled with the new colours and the layout. I hope you like it too. Today's topic is all about flowers. So it's absolutely brilliant that my guest today is Susie Lamb from The Blossom Room. Welcome, Susie. Thank you, Nikki. It's great to be here and I'm loving the new layout. It's gorgeous. We can't get away from Kim and Kanye's wedding that we've just uh, seen, the great big spectacle that's been splashed all across the... Uh, the news World Wide Web. Yeah, mm. so I bet you um, you were pretty impressed with that great big wall of flowers that oh, we saw. Indeed, it's kind of like uh, I think most uh, small you know, New Zealand florists uh, dream to do a massive wedding like that. It is stunning. We've all sort of I think a lot of sort of the top of florists like myself. We've done small walls, mm -hmm. but nothing on to obviously to the the scale size of that. that. It was absolutely amazing. Impressive. Twenty foot wall mm. comprising of peonies, roses, and tuberoses. Great. Yeah, and tuberoses are known for their beautiful fragrance, and they were out of season, so that everything was brought in for yes. that. Yes, everything would have been generally imported, and they probably actually would have had so much planning in the forethought of that, that a lot of the crops would have been grown specially for them and pre, obviously pre-purchased. That's amazing. Mm. Now, tell me, how is, how is a wall like that created? There's, you know, most people have different ways of doing it. The, probably the best one to do is, is a trellis wall, and then you can make directly onto the wall. But when you start getting to this sort of scale, you'll start doing it into segments. So you'll have boxes of the uh, green oasis right. that everyone knows. So you would do work in small sections and then you'd create the wall in sections. Wow, mm. that's absolutely amazing. It is amazing. Oh, and uh, the fragrance must have been incredible. Oh, it is something that's um, unfortunately you can't smell through the TV screen. Yeah. And it would have been incredible to be there. Yeah, mm. absolutely brilliant. Um, now every now and again you also see a few bloopers when it comes to flowers. Um, now take a look at this. Cool to him, as long as you both shall live. The rings please. Oh, oh God! No! no. Oh, oh, oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Are you okay? Oh my God! <laughs> oh. oh dear. Good grief. <laughs> it's a wah wah moment. <laughs> yeah. Yes, rather. <laughs> so when we come back, we'll be talking to Susie, and later on in the show, we're also going to be talking to real life couple Anna and Jackie about their wedding. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to The Guest List. I'm here with my guest and co-host, Susie Lamb from The Blossom Room. Now, Susie, you've been a florist for quite some time, haven't you? 15 years now, yes, wow. it's a wee while. Mm. How did you get started in the floristry business? Um, originally, I did a diploma course, mm -hmm. and then I just started working my way through as a junior, and then eventually opening my own uh, studio and it just sort of carried on from there really. And specifically moving into sort of wedding flowers, how did that happen? And, oh, I suppose it's got bigger and bigger word of mouth and it's something I really enjoy and feel passionate about. So it was quite an easy decision for me to stop having a retail store and just totally focus on weddings. I just, it's, it's my love really, it's my dream. So mm, I'm very happy. And you do them very, very well. Thank you. So. <laughs> um, now tell me and tell the viewers, um, when should a couple start thinking about coming to see somebody like yourself or another florist with regards to looking at their flowers for a wedding, whether it be the bouquets or whether it be the table decorations? In, within the a planning stage, when should they be talking to a florist? Ideally, mm -hmm. with the clients I tend to deal with, is preferably a first consultation 12 months out. Okay. Because you get booked up so quickly, you only do one wedding a day you, you know, and you do large wedding so we need to be having that initial consultation fairly soon and then we can go backwards and forwards through different consultations and then sort of firm up the areas. It's important that the day is um, obviously booked in especially for them. Right. So it takes out, you know, they don't have to worry that the, about flowers and they can leave it for a few months and then get back to it and then we can carry on with the planning. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Mm. Now a lot of people when they think about wedding flowers their first thought is just Okay, and maybe a buttonhole too, but there's actually a huge range of different flowers that you take care of. Absolutely. Let's talk about all of those sorts of things. Um, so yes, yeah, so then you've got your, your, your bridal party, 
You have um, then obviously the parents as well. A lot of people like to involve the parents with buttonholes and corsages. Uh, then you're going into tables and then uh, head table. Then you have the venue, decorating just the venue itself. Then ceremony arrangements, There's, there is a lot to tick off. Um, a lot of couples uh, want everything. And we also deal with quite um, little intimate weddings as well, where it's just a couple of bouquets and just a couple of buttonholes and maybe just a few arrangements for the ceremony. But it's sort of, yeah, hence the, you need a year out planning. No, that makes a lot of sense. Um, now, so you've brought a few items in here mm -hmm. for us to have a look at. Um, talk about what you've brought in here. Are these quite seasonal, what you've got in? A lot of them are quite seasonal flowers. Mm -hmm. um, the main here are the soft pinks and the um, oranges there. There's um, also early chair, which is definitely seasonal. So these sort of autumn brides, it's uh, beautiful colour tonings for them right now. So, you know, with the autumn colours. Um, the tulips, the parrot tulips, they are exceptionally gorgeous as they're starting to open. Um, so you'll get a beautiful fragrant bouquet, which you don't normally get sort of any other time of the year Lovely. because of the early chair. Um, the other bouquet here we've got um, with the purple berries, it's Kelly Carpa. That is also very seasonal. It's stunning, stunning colour. And bring in sort of the greeny cream roses with the purple brassica. And at the front is also the orchids and they're seasonal. So they've all been individually hand wired and taped and placed together in a bouquet. So it's quite a very, a very elegant, Instead of an all-round rose bouquet, it's another sort of variation of still keeping just the all-one flower type, but just a bit more texture and a bit more movement, especially if, you, if your dress is quite, quite simple. It's a nice, beautiful bouquet to go for. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about mixing uh, real flowers with silk flowers or artificial flowers? To be honest with you, originally, you know, years ago, I was for me, I felt it was a no-no. And the reason being is because the quality of the silk flowers was not there. Mm. They, they looked terribly artificial, very plastic, they were very shiny. But these days, um, regularly do, when, especially when a bride or groom specifically likes a flower and it's just not in season, we can use silks these days. The, the technology of um, printing on the actual fabric and the manufacturing of them is, is very good. Yeah. In fact, it's exceptional. So uh, no problem at all. And it means that um, when a couple is looking back on their photographs in years to come, they're happy because they've gotten the product they really wanted even though it was out of season. And it just, it looks stunning. Not a problem. Um, from a cost perspective, is there much of a difference between going artificial and going Silks for? can be more expensive. Really? Mm. And right. that's just the way it is. You would not be able to, they would be, no, actually the bouquet would be more expensive. If you were constructing, say, the bouquet with the spring flowers in there, mm -hmm. because there's so many stems, right. it would be a lot more expensive. That's an interesting one. Mm. I think people's probably perception is, is that the silk oh. would be a cheaper. Yeah. And I'm talking quality silks, though, not um, from you know just the plasticky ones. These are proper fabric. What are the really hot colours and trends that you're seeing coming through for 2014, 2015 weddings? Still vintage. It will never go. It will never go. Yeah. It will never. And it's slightly it's starting to get in a bit more edgier with people sort of stamping more instead of being that traditional just with the burlap um, and you know the pastels and the glass vases. People are starting to stamp a bit more with their own personalities on it. Mm -hmm. um, things they bring in that so that steampunk thing. Where it's got the little cogs and the little keys and you know, it's still starting to get a little bit more edgier, which is interesting because little couples are wearing, you know, making it really their own. Nice. So instead of sort of feeling like they couldn't stretch it a little bit further, they are starting to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so Vintage Never Go, uh, white on white on white is really, really starting to make an impact. Um, that's going from the table linen, absolutely everything's white. Um, even the bridesmaids might be wearing just off-white and you get a little hit of colour through your flowers. So it's, um, yeah, it's been quite, quite interesting. Yeah, but Vintage, always there. Mm. Nice, good to know. <laughs> now, obviously, there's you know a lot of game. People's perception is that it's just flowers, but there are a lot of elements that go in because you you can have things like bird cages, and there's the candles, and there's all the other elements that make up things like centerpieces. Mm. So let's talk about those sorts of things. I personally love candles. Mm -hmm. uh, more candles, the better. Obviously, you have to check with your venue whether or not you can use real candles. Mm -hmm. But the new flicker candles, uh, and such an improvement even on from the last last wedding season, the new product coming through, uh, they they a they last and b they actually look like a real candle. Just uh, just explain what a flicker candle is, because there might be viewers out there that don't don't know what a flicker candle is. Absolutely, a yeah. flicker candle is an imitation. Basically, they start off with tea lights, so a little fake flame, and it just flickers and it works off a battery. Um, the problem was the batteries didn't tend to last that long. 
and now they've improved, they've also got better ones now where they come up, the actual candle's made of real wax. So it's got that feeling when the candle's flicking on the inside and the, it's radiating out the light, it's perfect. It looks stunning. So there's you know, no reason you can't have a lot of them because they're easy to hire now. Mm -hmm. And they do look stunning on a table. Flowers, uh, like you mentioned, uh, bird cages, anything that gives sort of a third dimensional form mm -hmm. on the table, it just it keeps adding more texture. And glass, it's light reflective as well, so it just keeps adding and adding, adding to the ambience, especially as the night goes on and gets darker and darker and darker. You just it gives a beautiful glow. What does a what should a couple expect from their florist when they go in and and have has a consult? Would a florist organise all the things like the hiring of vases and stuff like that, or is it that you just supply the flowers? It, honestly, it, it can go in lots of different forms. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some couples who are very fully involved. I have had a bride a couple of months ago who they made all the containers with her dad, with all beautifully handmade wooden containers, and she scrolled out the heart and everything like that. So she provided all the containers, mm -hmm. hence and I had the flowers, and so and then we did the setup. Uh, we have other people who just do do it all. Don't want to know, don't want to be doing the pack down or anything like that. So you sort of get the whole variations really. Right. Or we've had brides that have been collecting their own vessels and what they like and you know, teacups, bottles, et cetera, et cetera. And so we just work with every couple's different. So we just work with what works best for them. Now you mentioned about set up and, and pack down. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's talk about that, um, people's expectations. What again do florists do generally? What do you do in forms of going in and setting up venues and, and delivering the bouquets and things like that? Because again, a lot of couples don't know, don't know what to expect. Yeah. Um, it all generally starts in the consultation. We work together. Uh, the main thing I tend to work with is when the photographer is arriving. Mm -hmm. So we need to know where um, the couple's getting ready, and generally it's in different locations, sometimes it's not. So we work in which hotel they're at, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and, and deliver them. Generally we've set up the venue. If we haven't, then we go back and set up. Some setups take, you know, maybe two hours. Some can take up to four to six hours, depending on the scale of the wedding. No, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And what about clearing up at the end? Is that something that you're responsible for? Do you go back in the day after or the night of the wedding? How does all that work? Uh, that's also uh, every time it's different. Right. Uh, there's a lot of venues that you have to pack down at midnight, so we go back in and pack down at midnight. Other venues we can, they can, they're happy to wait till Monday. Um, sometimes, um, you know, mum and pa kettle like to pack up themselves and take flowers, and then they'll drop things off back back to myself. So yet again, it's just uh, we work through the consultation process and how everything stacks up together. Fantastic. Now here's a, uh, one that I'm always interested to know. What are your tips in forms of keeping the flowers fresh? And this is particularly for the bouquets. I've got many brides that come along through the day and um, never actually your flowers, <laughs> funny enough, but you know, from other florists and, and you know, after a few hours, the bouquets are starting uh, to look a little bit sad. How do we keep them looking great? I think the main thing why and it doesn't happen with my flowers, is I make them the day of. So that is getting up at three o'clock in the morning and you start the wedding. Right. It's not making them the day before. Mm -hmm. So that's really critical to looking after your product. The second thing is when it's hot, it is imperative, if you've not got a full binding on the shank of your stems and you have this much left, to find a glass of water and pop them in and rest them. They need to be having as much water intake, especially after they're being freshly cut, so they can keep hydrated. So if you're in a hotel room and you have a cooler room with some air conditioning going in, please pop them in there. It's the best thing to do. Yeah, so just look out. They are a little work of art, and the most important part is to um, nurture them in some ways, not over the top, but nurture them that you know they're going to last for your photographs, because they are a natural product. So yeah, just not too much huffing around with them, but yeah, <laughs> look that after makes a lot them. of sense. Mm. Susie, thank you so much for coming in and chatting to us. If somebody wanted to get hold of you, what's the best way to reach you? Um, always on email. It's uh, info at theblossomroom.co.nz. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Right, so we've just been chatting to Susie from The Blossom Room, and uh, you now know how to get hold of her. After the break, we'll be chatting to real-life couple Jackie and Anna. So I'll see you after the break. Hi, welcome back to The Guest List. I'm joined today by Jackie and Anna. Jackie and Anna got married recently at the Floating Pavilion. 
Welcome, Jackie and Anna. Thank, Thank you for joining me. Now, fabulous story because you guys, for as, as far as I know, are the only couple here in New Zealand who have been married three times to each other but have never been divorced. Tell the viewers, how is that possible? I guess it's a pretty unusual story. We met about 16 years ago and about 10 years ago decided to get married in Canada. So at that stage marriage was legal for same-sex couples in Canada but not in New Zealand. So we decided to travel over to Canada and get married there. Then when the law changed in New Zealand last year, we decided we wanted to get married again. As part of the process of doing that, our celebrant checked with birth, deaths and marriages and found out that our Canadian marriage was already recognised in New Zealand. So under New Zealand law, we were already married. So if we wanted to marry again, it meant we had to change to a civil union and then change our civil union to a marriage. So that's what we did. Now you guys actually had quite a big part to play in the changing of the law here in New Zealand so that same-sex couples can now enjoy the same rights that every other couple can have. Tell us about that. We did. Well, one of the things I guess that, that was really important to us was same-sex marriage. I mean for obvious reasons for ourselves personally. Mm -hmm. Plus we think it's a really important step forward towards equality. So we decided that when the campaign started, so when um, the bill, Louisa Wall's bill got pulled out of um, the parliamentary box to be voted on, we decided that we wanted to get involved in the campaign. So we did things like postcards, set up a website uh, and lobbied politicians. Mm -hmm. And we're very delighted of course when the law changed. That is fantastic. Jackie, I know you, you are originally from Australia. I am indeed. We don't hold it that against you at all. <laughs> at all. Why thank you. <laughs> and we love it that you're now a New Zealander. Um, but I was chatting to you uh, off camera um, a few days ago and you were saying that you're now actually going to get involved in helping uh, Australians. Um, hopefully get their laws changed as well. Yeah, we think it's something that we'd really like to see happen. Um, we always said as a couple that, you know, after we got married in Canada, that whichever of our two countries allowed us to get married first, we'd do the big family celebration there. So we've done that in New Zealand now, but for us it's still important to see the law change in Australia. So we'd like to look at how we can get involved in the campaign. We've got lots of friends in Australia, so we'll start harassing them to, to do things. I think we Brilliant. have been for a while. Already. We have been for a while, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> so once all the legalities were sorted out and um, you knew that you could actually progress with your wedding and the plannings, how did all of that um, sort of start and then you could go ahead getting your, your wedding sorted out at the floating pavilion? The first step for us was choosing a venue mm -hmm. and we sort of had two sets of venues in mind out in the country. So we live out in West Auckland and um, you know, there's a lot of really beautiful venues out that way. So we thought about that and we also thought about getting married somewhere on the water because it's something that we really both love. So we checked out I think about half a dozen venues uh, and then settled on the floating pavilion. We really love the location, um, we love dealing with you and we, we just like the whole sort of package that was offered so yeah, we decided to go with the floating pavilion. The date was really important to us, so we got married on the 6th of, Ma uh, sorry, 6th of May in Canada in 2004. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to have a, the date that was as close as possible to our 10 year wedding anniversary. Oh, and good. so the Saturday was as close as possible. I thought we should go for the 6th of May, which would have been, what, a Tuesday? Tuesday. But Anna said that was somewhat unreasonable, so we stuck with the closest yeah. Saturday. I was more worried about my hangover. <laughs> <laughs> She's always the voice of reason. I've, I've come to know that. <laughs> so, so once we picked the date and picked the venue, then it was a matter of pick the celebrant. So we chose Chris Mullane, and who's done a lot of same-sex um, civil unions and same-sex marriages. We wanted to work with people who had either worked with same-sex couples before or were really comfortable working with same-sex couples. And so chose Chris and then sort of started putting everything, um, putting everything together from there. Yeah. And you had everything planned at one venue, so at the Floating Pavilion you had your ceremony and your reception? We did indeed. We didn't like the idea really of going and having a ceremony, disappearing for a couple of hours, coming back when our, our guests had been left alone unsupervised for two hours with alcohol, <laughs> and, then, um, and then having dinner. And we really liked the location of the Floating Pavilion, so it meant we had a good opportunity to take some great photos there. So we basically structured the day, and of course it was May too, so we had to worry about you know, light for photographs, etc. So we structured it so that we would do our photographs or nearly all our photographs in the morning mm -hmm. and then from there we'd go to the ceremony at around about quarter to four and then from there stay, have a few more photos with family and friends and then from there just go straight to uh, canapes and then later on to dinner. It and worked you, really well. So. And as, sorry, as you mentioned, although you live out um, in West Auckland, but you actually got ready uh, at a hotel quite close to the yeah. pavilion, which I think was great because then you were all central and you didn't have great travelling distances to get to the venue. No, we actually walked from the hotel, so we stayed at the Seawall, so it was perfect. And so we had our um, wedding party staying close by as well. They were, most of them were there. Mm. Um, yeah, so we all got ready there and then just walked down. 
I think that was a great call, good yeah. move on your part. Yeah. And I think it was just a, a nice added element to your whole day as, as I saw you come walking through down to, to your um, ceremony. I think it was yeah. just a great, it was a lovely touch to the whole day. Yeah, we were really pleased we did it that way. It meant we didn't have to worry about traffic, didn't have to worry about hiring a car. We could just walk there. We got, I think we got some great photographs on the way, mm. on the walk there as well. So yeah. it just worked really well. Oh, it was very, very cool. Um, let's talk about your uh, your decor and your theming yeah. of your... The theme. <laughs> what was the theme, Jack? Ah, uh, right. yes. <laughs> Yeah. All right, let's talk about your colour scheme. Well, I, essentially, I, I seem to recall that one of the first questions you asked us, in fact, was what was our colour scheme going to be? And we looked at each other a little bit bewildered. And then you took what you thought was going to be the easy question, which was, what are your favourite colours? And I think our response was, a grey and black yeah. acceptable? Yeah. And you said no. no not so, so we went from there. So luckily we had a really good person designing our, um, our invitations for us, and she designed all the stuff that went on the tables as well. So that was Sandra from Gorgeous Creative. And she came up with a few mood boards with different colours, different font types, all that sort of stuff. And then from there we picked the ones that really appealed to us and that sort of drove our colour theme from there. Yeah. So we went for a sort of sage green and I guess you'd call it lemon and yellow. Mm. Yeah. And it actually ended up being beautiful. It was, yeah. it was stunning. We were yeah, so impressed. Really yeah. yeah. So for two people who are not that creative, you came up with a stunning, <laughs> stunning colour palette. Well, I think what we did was we chose a really good designer yeah. and <laughs> she came up with a stunning, stunning colour well, palette. Good work, girls. <laughs> Great work from that point of view. <laughs> All right, let's talk about some of the highlights of the wedding, uh, other than the two of you getting married, okay. obviously. Um, you had a candy station, what you had a photo it? booth. Let's talk about those. People loved the candy station. It was a great idea. It was your idea. It was a great idea. Uh, people loved it. Well, there was a little bit of a stampede at one stage. I think um, our MC said that there was a candy station and people should feel free to go and grab candy during the course of the of the evening. And about 15 seconds later, there was a queue at the candy yeah, station. Good. And yeah. uh, people just loved it. Good. Yeah, there's a lot of photographs that, that our friends took of each other, sort of stealing various, you know, bottles of uh, candy, etc. The so giant jar of Jaffa's. The giant jar of Jaffa's. So. Yeah. so people did love it. And we thought also it was a good opportunity just to provide a little takeaway something for people. Yeah. We took the jars that people were going to put their candy in and used those to put their place names around so it was their place names on the tables as well. So it doubled up as your favour as well, it which did. was great. It tied really, in yeah. really well. Yeah, that was really nice. Mm. And uh, your photo booth, that was a big hit too. Yeah, and we timed it after everybody had sort of had a few drinks, everybody loosened up a little bit. And um, and again, when the, the curtain opened on the photo booth, just a stampede to get there. And mm. um, there were dress ups, which I didn't realise was going to happen. And yeah, there's the album's fantastic. Oh, yeah. good. So that's a great keepsake that you've got. Yeah. And it's fantastic too, because we got it the, the day that we picked up everything from the venue, so it was fantastic. It was there, we've been able to look at it several times since. Yeah. People got to write messages for us. Yeah, yeah it was excellent. That's, yeah. that's quite nice in, in as much as, instead of just a traditional style of guest book so with just some messages, you've actually got a visual mm -hmm. reference as well yeah, with yeah. all these funny photos and that sort of thing. Which and is they really got to nice. take um, the strips away for themselves as well, yeah. so even that night up on Facebook and there were just hilarious photos and yeah. everybody yeah. having a really good time. In fact, some of our friends still have their photo strips as their, as their Facebook pictures. So. Oh, that's so brilliant. It's still coming through, yeah. it's really lovely. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. All right, Jackie? What are some of your highlights from the day? There's a number, obviously. I think um, getting through the first dance so that we could stop being nervous was great. <laughs> um, but I think the thing I remember most, actually, is well, probably two things. One was before the day, actually, was when we walked in the night beforehand to do the rehearsal and the room had all been set up, yeah. and just how amazing it looked. Because not being particularly creative, I don't have a good, I guess, imagination for how things are going to look. So I was blown away by how amazing it all looked. I was really pleased with that. And another one was when we walked um, when we walked into the ceremony and just sort of seeing all our friends and family there and the sort of huge round of applause they gave us and stuff. It was yeah, we got a huge cheer. Really amazing event. That's yeah. Good. Anna, for you, what were some yeah. of your highlights? Probably getting to the top of that gangplank um, and just looking at everybody and just the huge cheer and overwhelming emotions mm. just that everyone was there and yeah, able to share in it. It was. It was awesome. It must have been quite different from your first wedding when it was just the two of you. It was literally just the two, two of us. Two, two witnesses, the celebrant, yeah. and her daughter as the photographer. So yeah, completely different. And then now you were surrounded by all your friends and family. So yeah. I can imagine how that must have been quite overwhelming for you. Yeah. So that's it was wonderful. It was exactly the wedding we'd always wanted, basically. Mm. It was the wedding we always would have had if we'd been able to get married 10 years ago. And the yeah. weather mm. cooperated. The weather oh, was we perfect. So, so we could do yeah. the ceremony upstairs as well. And mm. yeah, so the whole weekend, um, 
tied in. It was yeah, fantastic. So many people came from overseas and yeah, lovely. I think that was another one of my highlights actually was how many of our friends came from overseas. We had people who literally travelled halfway across the world mm. to come to our come to our wedding. Yep. And that was that was amazing. Yeah. I've got lots of friends in well we've both got lots of friends in Australia and a number of those came over as well, so it was wonderful. Yeah. In total, how many people did you have come to your wedding? I think total guests, including us, there were about ninety, I think. Mm, ninety that sounds about right. Yeah. 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 I think that's a really good number uh, to have at your wedding. Two many more than that and it would probably be a little, being a little bit overwhelming, but I think for Yeah, for the for the size of the venue as well, it filled it up quite nicely. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Without feeling crowded. I mean you could have got more people in there, definitely. Crowded or empty, either way. Yes, could have yeah. gone either way, but 90 was spot on. Yeah. 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 What would you suggest or, or what would your, your advice be to couples watching the show in forms of their planning now? A couple of things that you would say to them. Think about this when you're now planning your wedding. I think number one is get your venue as soon as you can. Get your venue and your celebrant. And your photographer. And your photographer, that's true. You had a great photographer. Yeah, we were really pleased, yeah Marie actually. Marie was just brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, She made us feel really comfortable in front of the camera, which neither of us hate being photographed at all, so it was a little bit awkward to start, but um, yeah, she loosened us up. And having the photos beforehand as well, she'd gone out and scouted places, so we ended mm. up doing photos down Wynyard Quarter. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and we, we've gotten some of those photos back now, and they're just amazing. Yeah, really, really cool. Um, we had a lot of fun, I think, in the end as well. We did. Yeah, she did a terrific job. So good photographer is really important. Mm. So wedding number four, is that going to be in Australia? <laughs> I'd like an invite. Please. Vegas. Oh, Thank Vegas. You. I'll be there. I'll be there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you. Man. Thank you. Thanks, Nikki. So a big thank you to Anna and Jackie, who we've just been chatting to. Now, earlier on the show, we were talking to Susie from the Blossom Room. We were talking all about flowers. Um, and uh, she gave us some great tips and hints. One of my tips is going to be with regards to flowers is when you are ordering your buttonholes for the grooms, um, order extra buttonhole for your groom because what happens is generally through the day, the buttonhole tends to start looking a little bit sad because it is out of water as, as Susie was talking um, a little bit earlier about. Um, and so order an extra one and so during the course of the day you can swap it out and therefore later on in the day it's looking a little bit fresher for the, uh, for the photos. So order extra one, it's cost you an extra $20, $25 but you really won't mind the spend because in the photos it's going to look much, much better. Alright, so this is Nikki and thank you for joining me here on the guest list. I'm going to see you next week. Happy planning. <laughs>